a show. <laughs> exactly right. So I've just pressed. I've just pressed play. Are we in stamina mode? I don't know yet. Yeah, we're definitely in stamina. Do mode. you want me? How close do you so want me I'm on just, mic? You and I are tethered. So yeah. this is kind of what I'm doing here. Okay, just for reference. I got a lot of compresses though. You'll be able to work it out. Yeah. I can separate. I mean, we need that kind of Giles Ma in technology. So, there we go. Yeah, let me just uh, open. Well, actually, I don't want to open with this, but I, I will ask you later. But um, yeah, are we going? We're going now. Oh, we're going. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Welcome, hello, Alex Bleeker. Hello. How many in times is it now? Oh, I think me and you to are the tethered. Five Timers Club. Okay. Is what I was going to say. Is Welcome the, to yeah. the Five Timers Club. I thought hey, this Johnny, might we're be. tethered. It's me and you. We're tethered. That feels kind of good. It does. Yeah. As it should be. So we're using a splitter because, uh, you know, time okay. to time. I might have to just go right up like you do. I don't think so. I'll just use a... Compete. Uh, you can, I mean, it is it's competitive. Kind of like, it's kind of like the mastering wars of the 70s, you know? Yeah, or of the, the loudness wars of the... Two thousand. Now, in the in the intervening weeks since I've been a guest on the podcast, have has this become more? Is there like a tech head contingency? Is it become Big more tech. of like a like have a you technical? Ever listened to the show before? That's only a I've only <laughs> I've only ever listened to the episodes that I'm on, and I I <laughs> That's listen. What most of our guests I do that. Listen to serial narcissists. I listen are to all, we all have of those. I listen to those. You know. All yeah. the way through. Well, many times. I, I love assume. the clips that you post on Instagram. I listen to all of those as well. <laughs> all the way through. That's great. That's <laughs> yeah. great. No, no, but you are, I'm sorry to say, not the first member of the Five Times really? Club. Yeah, I thought, Luke, I Luke thought for beat sure. You because Dan we did, Horn beat. No, he didn't mm-mm. really. No, not Dan Horn. <laughs> Luke did. We did a double episode on Aerosmith Pump. And that, because it was a double, it put him to five. But he it was, was at three. It was the same sitting. No, no, no. Same session. No. Different sessions. Different sessions, okay. Yeah. And because oh. he was at three and you were at four. I don't even know. And then Luke. he kind of leapfrogged you yeah. with the double pump. Well, in I want to I want to ask yeah. the, uh, because I, you know, because. Obviously, Dan Horn's number one guest. And that, no. I mean, I, I don't, I don't listen to the show at all, so I don't have a sense of this, but, um. Bleak or bleak. I'm or, joking. Nor do I read the comments really on wherever you guys are. I'm sure your fans are commenting wildly all over the place. You're beloved. Uh, by I want, the I, I, community. I've been kind of you. walking around assuming that I'm kind of like a, uh, like a premier guest, you know, like. That you, most famous guest, I think. Uh-huh. <laughs> you're, you're, you guys got to work on that. You're more than a premier guest, buddy. Mm. You're you're part of the team, like almost like a co-host when I'm on. I can say, and I want everybody <laughs> listening to know how exciting this is that you are about as premier as it gets because you are here in person with us today. That's true. In Vancouver, yeah, you have huge. done what so many of our friends in the United States are wishing they can do but don't have the guts to do, which you have you have fled. Yeah, I've crossed the, the border. You've fled the country I'm in back. a time of crisis. And, I mean, it's basically... The, it's the Vietnam War all over again. It's And you took the Cascade Trail. Yep. Through... Uh, where does it cut through, James? It goes James? through kind of like near... Uh, well, Cathedral... I think to Nelson, actually. Grove, Yeah. Night yeah, Cathedral Hawks. Grove, yeah. I don't think it's Cathedral Grove. That's on the island. <laughs> but, you know, it could be. I mean, sure. Well, I well, could. If you take, go by a boat, I Clipper. Am, and yeah. I would go by boat. Because, you, you know, yeah. yeah, there's the Coast Guard and what have you. The authorities are As your forefathers down there. did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true, actually. They came from Europe early on. Yeah. Missed the war. It's a similar thing. They arrived in BC by boat, those people, I think. Well, are we talking about the folks who crossed the land bridge? Oh, we're talking about <laughs> we're the Bering way back, Strait. Way back, yeah, we could eleven thousand years ago. Oh, wow, you, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was talking more about the the you know the colonial settlers in Victoria. Well, that we don't we like don't the, really as a rule go further back than the Beatles. Yeah, right. that's true. Exactly. So, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're I, talking excuse kind of me sixty three. Yeah, yeah. Well, in which it's, case, that's kind of like that was already here. That's what I'm you know? saying. That yeah, yeah that. <laughs> <laughs> that came across the pond, yeah, it's and a, yeah. arrived and played Shea Stadium. That's AD one, yeah, yeah, in our kind of universe. Yep, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I got. Yeah, that's <laughs> all I got. I got a great website here. We don't really do episodes 
anymore. Well, you don't do records anymore. You've abandoned that conceit. Well, you know, I just don't know that anybody needs to know needs to know that that Exile on Main Street is good because they because literally the way I see it, I go on Amazon Prime, you know, Netflix, you name it, I got it. Okay, okay sure. And all I see on there is documentary after documentary basically saying all of these albums are great. And they get all kinds of people like David Frick, etc. David on, Grohl. Dave Grohl, another, all the Daves. Yeah. Yeah. And they get them all there on there to talk about how great the band is or the album is. And that's all it is. You don't get anybody kind of talking about, you know, who, what are the greatest minds in history. Yeah, or like, for example... Um, the fact that on Ranker.com, yeah, that's the greatest I mean. Rolling Stones record is, in fact, Let It Bleed. Well, that's fact, if that's what it says on yeah. Ranker. What's so, number two? Uh, I think Sticky Fingers. Yeah, what's number three? Exile. Yeah, so yeah. there you go. I don't know if Frick would agree. Well, this well is- actually, in these days, it doesn't even matter what Frick thinks, because... It's I'm, more about like what like Apple product they're trying to flog with a new reissue of Exile. The yeah. thing is, though, that's the ranker perspective. I'm more interested in the perspective that's kind of off the beaten path, you know? Well, uh, the thing about ranker you know, is it's everybody speaking. It's, but uh, is it, though? You know, I, you know like, uh, what, what about Goat's Head Soup or, or, or Some Girls? You know, I'm much well, more of I'll an alternative. You. Number seven, kind of, coming in at number seven, Goat's Head Soup. Yeah. Seven? Yeah. And Some Girls is below. No, it's number five. Yeah, okay. What? This is the people <laughs> what talking. What about Baker's Banquet? Four. Oh, yeah. It's a pretty good list. It's not. That's I pretty, mean, I tattoo guess, you six. That'll be nine. Probably. No, tattoo you's eight. See if you can guess what's six. Um, aftermath. Yeah. See, the people have spoke. <laughs> <laughs> so what? What I was trying to say, Bleaker, is that what we've done is you know instead of just talking about how great everything is, we're trying to rank. We're more of a ranking podcast now. So we're we're saying. No, no one thing is great. You got to, if you want to evaluate music or anything, you got to rank it. So they're all great. Everything is great. But how great compared, you got to put it, uh, you remember Mike from the Shilohs? Yes. So we were going to, we were going to rank Beatles albums and Beatles solo albums, right? And I was off with a beer from Mike and Mike said, well, you know, Mike is very serious guy. He said, well, you know, there's only one way you can do that. You have to pit all of the albums against one another. Kind of playoff style. Playoff style, tournament bracket, okay. March Madness. Okay, did you do it? And we did it. You did it. <laughs> For about two hours, and it worked, I, I think. I think Abbey Road won. Or something. <laughs> I think it was what you'd expect. White Album won. Yeah, against Please Please Me. Maybe. No, top different four. different eras really uh, yeah. really making it. But all I was way the, the only finals. one making the decision of who won, so it wasn't really at all. It's I'll just, tell you that on uh, Ranker dot com, the best <laughs> Beatles albums, why album comes in number five? Unbelievable atrocity. What album comes in number five? White album. The white album. Yeah, that makes sense for the Ranker crowd. I think the Ranker <laughs> crowd. <laughs> The ranker crowd is everybody. I don't think the ranker crowd. I don't think the ranker crowd really skews left of the mainstream, like you know, like 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 myself here. You know, are you fa- you familiar with ranker? Never heard of it before in my life. That's the problem. Exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the ranker crowd. But I'm sort of convinced with Bleaker's theory here that ranker might be just like. Two or three people. No, I'll tell you. I they think it's a f- let you know. They let you know. There's transparency. How? Yeah. yeah. How many people have upvoted and downvoted, like Reddit? Yeah. So, for example, the best Beatles album, 1,600 people have upvoted it and 515 have downvoted it. So, it has the most cumulative votes. It's a voting thing. It's democracy. And if you downvote it, that means they don't like the list? I think it's 1686 minus 515 equals your score. Yeah. But okay. I, don't, I don't know if Ranker's really getting in front of all of the great minds who might have an opinion on this, you know? I see what you're saying. What's the Ranker demographic? Well, exactly. You know? But like, is there so, why does it need to be higher and lower art? Like, let the people decide. Yeah, but I you think... Know? But I don't think all we the people are included, you know? I think maybe we need to get Ranker... We need to get on there and start ranking. We need is what you're saying. Are, have you participated in the ranking yourselves? I've been too blown <laughs> away. But listen, this website doesn't just do 
music. Okay, what else have they got on there? Anything you oh, want. Man, boy, do you hear this? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, how about this? They're ranking all the best, all the songs on the White Album ranked here. Mm-hmm. So you want to have a go? Number one. Uh, yeah, think about I, it. I, I, so I don't, this is not my personal Happiness opinion. Wait, gun. wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I got, I got, I'm trying to prove a sorry, thesis man, here. Yeah. No, no, it's all right. I'm not, I'm just sorry. a guest. Yeah. I shouldn't have done that. No, no, no. He's a bit edgy <laughs> and nervous. He's you like, me, just come across. You get me the, ranking Beatles, I'm frothing. I just don't want, you know, listen, this is, this is my, the, I could be wrong here, but I'm, you know, totally blind, never been to the website before in my life. Yeah, that's pretty good. I might, <laughs> I believe you. I might think that uh, the ranker crowd would put, I don't know, uh, while my guitar gently weeps, at number one from the White Album. It's a good guess, you know. But but I'm coming from the, another perspective, you know. I'm I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to bring up the Revolution Nine crowd and their perspective here. You, you know? want Revolution? You I don't want Revolution it at number one, but I there. think that's a subsect of White Album listeners who maybe aren't represented by the ranker crowd. And and I want to know, you know, I think Revolution Nine is going to be very low on the ranker list. I'm going to say Revolution Nine might be the worst it, it's Beatles c- song. It could be, it but is. but it's you know, I appreciate it. You know, I'm glad that they're putting stuff like that on the record. Yeah, it's interesting. It gives them some credibility. I, I think. really think that's a good guess. While yeah. my guitar gently weeps. One and Revolution Nine last. Okay, yeah. that's the rank. That's your ranker theory. That's my uh, ranker spread. You're right, of the happiness white album. to warm gun a little too arty. That's got probably. That's going to be maybe top five, 10, 15, five. definitely. You know, I'm I'll so let you know that the the rank last is Revolution Nine. Yeah, yeah. And also, <laughs> it's in a couple of other lists though, so it's don't feel so bad for it. It's number, number one worst Beatles song. It's number one worst Beatles song. Yeah, on ranker. It yeah yeah. It's <laughs> not <laughs> ranker. It's number 28, though, as the best songs with the word revolution in it. <laughs> it's number 34th of a list with the best songs with a number in the title, which we could look up that list. 34? That's yeah. high. What do you think's up there? Like, Love Potion number nine's got to be in Let's the top ten somewhere. Not bad. Yeah. Let's, uh, I'll tell you where that is. Uh, That's not even in the top ten. Damn. Um, just the two of us? Oh, I'm going uh, Mambo number five. I was thinking that, but I don't <laughs> see it. That's a pretty good song, actually. Um, uh, neither of those. What about one is the loneliest number? Number 11. Mm. It's also eighth in a list of the best songs about loneliness. <laughs> uh. Should we look up that? See what's number best one in that list? Wait, I, wanted, I do want to know the number one song with numbers with in number? it. That's pretty meta. Yeah, what's the number one song with a number? Another one bites the dust. Uh, okay, Ooh. so it's not just numerical numbers. No. No. Which is also number ninth in a ranking of best workout songs <laughs> and number two of 77 of, of the best pop songs about death. <laughs> 277? No, number two of 77. It's number oh, two wow. of number 77. Two. Welcome to Impossible Way of Life, your premium ranking okay, well, this, podcast. This, if yes. you like what you hear, this is a Wednesday episode. Yeah. We do this twice a week, so for exclusive premium content, and I think we're at episode, this is going to be like, I think this might be episode 100, actually, incredibly. I mean, Is it? it might, well, I don't know. Well, that would d- definitely put you up at the top if you're the guest on number 100. It's possible this is going to be 100. That's it incredible. could be 99. I don't know. Depends but- on how you play it. I don't even know what number we're at. The listeners will know by now. I can tell you right now that, yeah, if you like this, subscribe to our Patreon because I can tell you right now that we are ranked number one classic rock current events ranking. Yeah, fitness, food, and beauty. Phil minimalist running. Are you ranked on ranker? We see. I think. I think the listeners. I've not even gone into the culture bit. (laughs) There's a lot going on here that we haven't even discussed. You know, first of all, this. Maybe it's fresh in my mind because I only listen to the episodes that I'm on. But there's a lot of Queen, you know, popping up here on Ranker. Well, we know that they've made a... You actually brought this to our Well, they attention. are the, the number one best They're rock They're the number band. one ranked band. I actually have to, have to follow up on that episode. Okay. You know, because the clip that uh, we pulled from that episode that we all posted to promote it was about how Queen um, is better than uh, the 13th Floor Elevators. Yeah, and well, I, aren't real estate so better real estate? Well, yeah, that's less controversial. Everybody knows perhaps. that. Yeah, you know, but um, 
So, but that was, we weren't, I wasn't mentioning real estate in the clip that we pulled to promote the episode. Mm. Yeah. And I got some serious heat pushback from an old friend and fellow musician. He, he and he Do wasn't even him? joking around. Any kind of like wink and a nudge, tongue in cheek, you know, I, I want to clarify for Nate if he's listening to this episode. I, I was trying to point out how ridiculous that was. But he was like, I had to explain the joke to him because he was like, fuck that, man. And I was, I think that was the, the DM that I got. And I was like, no, no, no. It's kind of like, like, like sidebar because I like Nate and I love his music. You know? mm-hmm. I was like, no, it's kind of a joke, you know. <laughs> and he was like, what, the queen he was like, okay, the okay, I get it. And we can, we can hash that out. You the know? real but estate part or the queen part? The queen, the, the queen part. Queen are definitely well, better than the 13 floor elevators. I mean, I, you don't you need know, a ranking just, to tell me that. You just lost a fan, you know, well, or maybe you never even gained one. I mean, I think that that's like easily like it's at least worth talking about. Like it's let's not, unpack this a little. Let's bit. get into it. You know, <clears throat> depends what kind of music you like. You know, well, I don't know. wait a minute, you're 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 coming up against. A, don't say that too loudly because if this is a ranking podcast, then you know, like and well, you're talking about mean, you're talking about subjectivity versus objectivity. Who's here. the ranker here? Who watches the Watchmen? Yeah, exactly. Ex- who, like. Who's ranking the rankers? Honestly. That's why I'm saying if your friend and all of us and a butter and thousand other people get together and rank Queen higher, then he can't. Then he's got no leg to stand on. Which is what happened, I believe, on Ranker.com. Okay, not only they're bigger than 13th floor. Am I wrong in saying that we found out last week they're the number one rock band all time? Beatles number two. Am I yeah, correct? Yeah, because yeah, they are. Yeah. Which is. I'm actually not going to go ahead and say that that's... But the ranker crowd, you know... I think it's possible I made that up just because it was funny at the time, but... Okay, so why don't we participate in our own little three-man ranking? You want me to say... Exercise here. You you want me on record to say that I rank Queen higher than a 13-floor elevator? There are two... You know, we're just ranking these two bands. And real estate. Three bands. That's fine. We can... Fine. (laughs) Fun. <laughs> I I'm gonna go in that. I'm gonna go Queen Real Estate Thirty Four wow. Elevators. Wow. Um. I don't. You those nostalgic. I'm gonna wall, go. I'm gonna are, go. I'm gonna go. Uh, 13th Floor Elevators. Queen. Wow. Real Estate. Yeah. I'll go. Uh, 13th Floor Elevators last as well. I think, but that's only because I don't really know their music. Okay, but but you know, sk- you, know you buried the lead there, Johnny. Is real estate better than Queen? It's huge. Well, that's what I'm trying to decide <laughs> yeah. right now in uh-huh. my head. And I'm just. It's basically. I think, f- I think that I'll have to wait until you guys have had however many years Queen have had on Spotify to. Well, let me try to dig into the head of the 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 typical who I am projecting might be the typical ranker. Uh huh. Really trying to take personal preference out of the equation and rank. You know, quantifiable yeah. qualities. Let's sure. leave thirteenth floor elevators aside. With respect to my friend Nate, I think they're great. You know, uh, uh, Queen. They're probably great in terms of pure they're, musicality they're and musicianship. You know, yeah. Freddie Mercury we know has a much bigger uh, vocal range than Martin Courtney, lead singer of Real Estate. Okay, so that's a point in the Queen There's a corner. point, yeah, for sure. You know, and then also... Also, I, ha- I hate to say it, Martin, if you're listening, I think Freddie's got him beat in, like, showmanship on stage, Absolutely. Too. Across the just, board. Just by a hair. But I- you, okay, well, how about this? If I was to decide, for example, if there was something like music to listen to whilst think, like, nostalgically... Riding a bike through Martha's Vineyard. Well, real estate don't have any songs I about would, a riding a bike. I no, take, I'd take real estate. <laughs> I would take real, I would estate, real estate in estate terms of like, that. yeah, that mu- would be music ranked. to ride around campus. Sure, to. but if we're ranking Queen in real estate in that particular category, they have a exactly. song about bicycles. <laughs> yeah, we have so. to, yeah, but they have a song about bicycles. So. Yeah, which you don't. Yeah, as I'll far tell as you I know. right now, if I was just kicking back drinking a Varsteiner, yeah, yeah. around four o'clock on a Thursday, I'd, I'd real take estate. real estate. Better music, but that's a subjective opinion. That's, and that's, and- that's I would prefer. I mean, that's Johnny. We're not talking about quantifiable rankings. Like, can Julian Lynch, lead guitar player of real estate, this is the ranker crowd mindset. Better I, I mean, use of phaser. Can, has he have more left hand guitar player dexterity? Mm-hmm. You know, who's and, and Julian's pretty good. You know, he can do some sweet picking. Are you can, saying? Are you officially saying Julian Lynch is? 
better than Brian No, May I'm not. Point. I'm saying Are you, you going on record. I'm saying <laughs> Do we you, have you on record? Yeah, okay. It, in terms of technical quantifiable <laughs> okay, really? Really? I may technically pre- better I may than Brian only May. Technically you heard speaking. Here first, <laughs> you heard first. No, 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 no. I'm saying the inverse. <laughs> I'm saying the inverse. Excuse me. I can imagine I've had too li- much Varstein. I can imagine <laughs> a list that like Rocky Erickson and Freddie Mercury are both on like a top like front man, like yeah. performers. I, I, I'll admit my ignorance uh, about both the 13th dead. floor elevators. Both I know, dead. They're on yeah, that list. Yeah, yeah, I know the record. Yeah, uh, I guess my thing is like... He'd be know. on a cr- bin... Sorry to interrupt you. He could be on a list of like rock and roll casualties, like mental health casualties. Yeah. He'd rank pretty high on that. Yeah, yeah. it's like Rocky and Sid Barrett. They're up there. Yeah. 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 Brian Wilson. He's still alive, though. Oh, yeah. I'm talking about just <laughs> mental health casualties. Yeah, okay. Because Rocky, like, made a comeback. Kind of Brian Wilson style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Solo career. Yeah. That's right. With, like, uh, I don't know. Who was his backing band? Probably Hip Hip Wasn't LA like Jay Retard or Waves or something? Well, you know, Jay Retard, another uh, mental yeah. health casualty Yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that, you know... I'm kind of a, like, you know, I grew up, like, driving around, listening to the radio and stuff like that. Okay. And and then, you know, if if I missed out I've on a band, it. I missed out on them. So that's, you have to take that into account for ranking. Like, you hear Queen all the time. And I get into the tune, 13th floor elevators, you got to... You got to have the right person kind of. Well, they got that so weird you're saying instrument. like clear channel, classic rock radio. Really, um, they're not on the same. They rankings stole for sure. the op- your. They stole the opportunity for you to even make an objective decision. Thirteen exactly. floor elevators versus Queen. And I think Queen. that I think that you know familiarity, nostalgia. It all comes into play when you're ranking. Jock jams. No, it, because it, I think I think you're really misconstruing who the ranker. You know who is the ranker? Who is the ranker? Well, it's not you because you're not you're not on the ranker. But website. I thought we were ranking right now. Well, we're ranking, sure. But I I think that the ra- I'm I'm trying to get into the mindset of the person who uses the website ranking. Oh, you're kind of doing some kind oh, of. Oh, yeah. so you're These sort of pigeonholing metrics. all the rankers as yes. the same type of person. Yes. Okay, yes. I see. Yeah. See, so, I view all the rankers as just all the world. You know, I I my my experience with with the rankers is from the the. 45 second clips that you guys post on Instagram, you know, and and right. and the sort of message boards of the sort of ranking sure. the ranking corner of the internet. Actually, you are you are right And now these I'm folks are they're about quantifiable. Yeah. Listen, it doesn't matter what you prefer. Brian May is technically yeah. a far better guitar player than Julian Lynch and that's what we're considering in our totally objective well, yeah. non-subjective right. ranking. I'm going to say though yeah. the the point that we need to bring up here is like is that the 13th floor elevators have never actually been in a ranking list with queen because yeah. traditionally it's kind of what i mean rolling stone covered queen pitchfork covers 13th floor elevators since the conde and ass takeover bands like 13th floor Le- elevators they've got nowhere to go now yeah you know they're not going to be in a list with like billy eilish right or like Juice I, World. I think they might be though. They probably rank on Pitchfork's best I albums. I don't of think the so 60s. anymore. I think these bands have their makeup on there. They be like, there's still a place for like. I, I feel like 13th Floor Elevators, kind of, uh, you know, maybe like a Moby Grape. Uh, <laughs> certain bands that time forgot a little bit. Oh, you that's know what a, I mean? Possible that there's a, they're on a ranking on rank of bands that time forgot. I'm thinking because then I was gonna say Velvet Underground and certain bands like that, but the Velvets kind of are doing the thing now. They got the Apple documentary coming out. They're, they're making, making a, play. a play to be included in the Queen ranking. Category. I think they've always been there. They're the peripheral. You know, the Andy Warhol connection. You know, they've always been like the perennial I've heard of this outsider band. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, like 13th Floor Elevator is perhaps one step removed. From they have that weird scene. conch music m- It's almost instrument. like they're like The Clash or something. Maybe not quite that. But no, no, no. The Velvets. Oh. The Velvet Underground, I think, are the ori- they're the Beatles of the Pitchfork world. Absolutely. That's kind of like how it works. 100%. So, so, like, I would even go as far as to say that, like, real estate... Like, although I know you've got, you know, I don't, we don't need to get into it live, but I know you've got some, you know, pitchfork beef. Well, we've fallen from grace, which is fine. I mean, you've got to in order to sort of come back around. Do you think you've been replaced by kind of Juice World? Yeah, I don't even, I don't even know what that is. So probably, you know, know, young. uh, We're old now. You know, it's episodes like this that I feel like, I don't know fucking anything about music. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's weird. About but modern pop music. You no, mean. just about anything, yeah. really. I'll tell like, you what, I'm, Moby Grape, 98th in greatest American rock band. What about Love and Spoonful? Where do they rank there? In no. greatest American? <clears throat> I'd put them maybe like kind of 68. That's pretty high, I think. For them. But they have some hits that, you know. They got, they're a good band. good songs, yeah. yeah. I'm looking. There's not I mean, that many bands. We still didn't find out if uh, "While My Guitar Gently Weeps" is in fact the number one. You know what? Song it was number one. Of course. Wow. So I, I nailed the spread. Incredible. Dude. I think I got well, insight into us, the mind. Can you of the talk record. us through your methodology? Like, let's talk through what you were thinking you when know, you I made that decision. I think I just like it. It might be just my experience as a guest on this podcast for five times. But well, I, I do like, it. I do it twice a I week. I feel like I'm I, inside I the mind of. On. I feel like I'm inside the mind of the ranker, and that proves my thesis that it's a very particular kind of person. You're sort of you're an insider, but you're an outsider. Yeah. So you can kind of do an kind episode like and go away and kind of be like an American in Canada. Yes, you know? but we're like, but we're trapped in this. We're trapped. We, you're too we close. can't objectively. Dude, I'm in losing. Le- I'm in the fourth level. I think that you've got I'm it. like Ice World Nolan. I'm right like now. in the prestige, like the magic movie, but like I'm behind the mirror, and then you flip it around, and yeah. I'm gone. And where is he? And then he's totally. And he's accidentally okay. created another version of I himself. I think that's what I mean. I'm trying to that's what I feel. I feel like the other version of me is hosting this one right now. Really? From the last episode, somehow. Well, we're also sat in exactly the same seats. I and know. It got, we went fugue state. Alex, I have a very important question for you. <laughs> yeah. And I want you to answer it As quickly. As honestly as I can. And honestly. Yeah. When are real estate releasing... The Dolby Atmos remixes of all your albums. Well, we're coming up on the 10 year anniversary of Days. Yeah. Our big is you the works. record. So Day, that's, Days, that's all I'll say. Huge record for me. It was a huge record for me personally. For me too. Yeah. You know. Is it in the works? Oh, we got a lot of special stuff coming your way. You know, a lot of bonus stuff. Can't say features. too much. Can't, Can't say, say too, too much. much. I respect that. You know, I'll I come respect. back on this podcast to promote it when the time comes. All obviously. I can say, all I can say is if you don't have the tapes, Get the tape as Trevor yeah. Spencer. You know Trevor. I don't get know Trevor. Get the tapes. Get if you don't know where the tapes are, Martin. Get the tapes. If you're listening. If you're listening. Listen. Because I'm telling you, buddy, Giles and Steve Jobs, who's probably still alive, they'll find the tapes <laughs> and they will remix your record in Dolby Atmos without you even and they, knowing. Without you knowing, and you will search for it on Apple. And the first thing that will come up will be the Dolby Atmos. Well, it won't be the mix you did. Listen, I defected and went to Spotify a long time ago, you know? Yeah, well. Well, they, who knows what they're doing? They're going to turn everything into sort of like... They're I just going to compress like the shit out of it, Scandinavian really. Scandinavian yeah. kind of... They'll do some EDM stuff. I got stuff. a pitch for, for you guys. Why don't we go into your studio in Strathcona mm-hmm. oh, yeah. with mm-hmm. the takes? And we'll do a classic albums kind of Fager, Fagan Becker kind of thing where we like ISO... You know, nice. Martin's vocal harmonies and and, Dude, and which I'd love tapes, that. And real estate, the days tapes. Dude, you got yeah. it. I'll get them. Can I come? I can get them. Yeah, of course. It's an episode of the pod. Let's get it out. We on. should do. We should get spread a, it out on that SSL. Well, we can spread it we out. We need if a you proper want. board yeah. for I this. I can spread that out on the SSL. The pump by Aerosmith was recorded on. Yeah. You just give me twenty four hours Let's notice. Do is it. all I I'll need. I'll bring the. I've, I, it was mixed down to two inch tape. You've got the actual. We'll get the tapes. Release the tapes. We'll get the tapes. And we'll we'll parse through it. You got it. I'll tell stories from the good old days. Just give us twenty four you know? hours notice. Yeah. We're gonna need to get a Faraday cage installed at that studio 100%. because I won't bring the, I won't bring the tapes. Not music in. of that quality. I won't. I you refuse think I'll bring to. The, you know the kind of mag- magnetism going on in there. Animal. Magnetism. These are gonna be the original mess. Do you see tapes. what he's saying? Yeah. We can't yeah. bring the tapes in there without a Faraday With a, cage. If there's any kind of five G interference. It, if somebody's got a phone in there connected to a cell tower where it could all fucking go up and smoke. Yeah. The way I see yeah. it. I don't want to delete Don't nothing. turn an amp on in there, buddy. You blow the whole place. It's so true. It's so true. Yeah, man. Well, I tell you, Days. Where'd you make huge. that record? New Paltz, New York. Actually, same place we made our most recent record. You I got to try really we'll talk hard. about that in 10 years, though. I got to try really hard not to just talk about Days for the next 30 minutes now. I'm I'm getting a little tipsy after after this uh, so Varstein. Probably would show. like to hear you talk about it. <laughs> kind of feel yourself a little bit. Mm. Okay, I got a question for you. <laughs> Did is the naming of it any reference to television second record days? Yes, it, it is. Well, adventure. You're thinking of the track adventure days. and the song it, days. Yes, it, very much has a real estate energy. It's named after the song. Fantastic. It's so funny that like it, it sort of stuff like. 
Guys like us at that age, Dude. Yeah, we were so susceptible. Television to second so record. So wild. The Shiloh's yeah. record was big star. You know, that's she's a mover. She's yeah. so wild. And I was like, that sounds cool. We'll call it that. Yeah, Have like, you ever covered days? It's incredible. By the Kings? You know, you'd think Dude, you'd think no, that this, the, that so, this was a, a lined up. No, 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 you'd think no, 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 you'd no, think no, that no. this was a lined up uh, bit presser event. Okay. Well, just keep talking about that record and what it means to I'll you. Tell let, you. Let me see. What I'll tell I can you. Every, dig okay, up here you know, for I could you. talk about television. Let me see what all I can day dig long, up buddy. Here for you. I was about. I'm gonna say. 18. This, yeah. this is kind of not the kind of story you tell people in a bar to impress them. I was a big Strokes fan. I, I love the Strokes. I put on the first record again no. recently. But I was ha- there was these two guys in my uh, university who were called Joe and Joe. Yep. And they were really cool, really cool guys. And they, you know, like at that age, you're kind of, you know, your dalliances with being a... I suppose a bon viveur, you know, and you're kind of like, we drink gin and tonics and listen to music and like talk about like Warhol and stuff like that. Uh huh. And they put on Marky Moon at my house one time. I think I was just with my friend Paul and Joe and Joe. Just keep talking. This isn't going to make me cry. <laughs> keep going. Tell the story over this. Nice. Great. I love this. You, you heard it here first. first days, man. <laughs> oh, this is so great. Is this is not out? This is a world exclusive. This, world isn't, exclusive. this isn't even a final mix. <laughs> oh, world, you. No one will ever stand. Martin's gonna kill me for playing this unfinal mix through I my phone into this hand. microphone. You know. I love yeah. this. I want to hear at least the drummer go to ride, and then you can change it. So the chorus is coming up. I want to hear him use that bell. Oh, you killed the drummer, there man, Jackson. Not what? Jackson. <gasps> On this track, we've talked about that before. Good yeah. drummer. Good drummer. Jackson's a great drummer, but Jackson, one of my favorite drummers ever to watch live. He's a great player. Love watching him play. Not playing on that track. No. No. Who's drumming? A uh, woman named Sammy Niss. She's great. Good drummer. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, mm. with television, the way that story ends basically is that they were playing Marky Moon. I'd never heard it before. Yeah. And I was a big Strokes fan. Yeah. Kind of Franz Ferdinand. They invented this sound, and man. I, and I, you know, they were playing Marky Moon. And, it was, and I thought it was a new band. I was like, oh, this is like another band that yeah. sounds like the Strokes. And I remember being like, this is great. Like, who's this? And they were like, it's television, man. You know, it's, it's television. I was like, it's like, can I go see them yeah. and stuff? And like, actually, 70s, man. around that point and in time, you could go see Dude, them. Yeah. I saw them yeah. open for Patti Smith. I saw them by themselves. But it, this is a curious thing. And if anyone wants to fact check me on this, I'd welcome it because it confuses the hell out of me to this day. I'm pretty sure I saw Patty Smith open for them, but I've decided it must have been the other way around. But where it was certainly no more Maybe than a not. thousand people there. Yeah. This is before Maple Fort yep. book. It's be- this is like those guys touring as like heritage bands. In no Vancouver? one really know rem- in, in Manchester. I remember television played in, in New York City, like reunion tour. I didn't even go, which is ridiculous. Yeah. And they played at Irving Plaza, which is like a 1200 capacity venue, something like that. Yeah. You know? But. Okay, so that that Richard Lloyd I miss, credit is a writer on days. I missed the show at the Commodore too. It's not played. just Verlaine that the one. Commodore is where they, they played. played the Commodore here. You yeah. know, I uh, okay, so that leads on me that reunion. A couple of follow up questions here from yeah. this story. Mm-hmm. One, well, maybe just sort of proves your uh, the Velvet Underground or the Pitchfork Beatles thesis. Yeah, because I remember when the Strokes first hit, it was like uh, the Strokes. They're the new Velvet Underground, you know? Because of and, the Lou Reed connection. Yeah, and I'm not... What, what is the Lou Reed connection? His voice. Just his voice. Energy. Just the like the I'm York, waiting for New my man, kind of. Yeah. Sweet but, Jane, actually, But I always more, thought I that it sounded so... Uh, you know, like, this is embarrassing, but maybe a lot of millennials my age will relate to this, because I was pretty young when the Strokes came around. I was 16 when I saw them. I think oh, I was younger than that, 13, it, 14. I was 16. I saw them play. They hadn't... They'd only released... 
the last night single because oh, they did that thing where they're like we're gonna get big in the uk and they and, came over yeah. and it changed it changed me it blew yeah. my fucking head off so i i you know i was like an, went out and bought Chuck just Taylor's getting into indie day. you know i was a, a pavement guy oh yeah and uh and the strokes come along and it was i i, I don't want to like cast any shade on the strokes because i think the first record and, and to some degree the second record are like oh those are both, classic rock records, records in my mind um but I was young. I was really young. I hadn't listened to the Velvet Underground yet. I w- I'm not too proud to admit it. So that led me okay. to the Velvet Underground because I was like, oh, if you like this, this is just Velvet Underground, which I don't think is really true. And I love the Velvet's records because I was led to them. Yes. But they don't sound like the Strokes. No. But television may be more of a closer It's the guitars, analog. right? Analog. Yeah. It's the guitars. The I'm, melodicism sure. or something. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. The guitar, yeah. tele- and you know what? Like, it's, it, you know what else is interesting in a serious point, actually? Because this is a dream conversation for me. This, this stuff. <laughs> Johnny's is, over there rolling his eyes. I'm going to bring it back to Queen Cause, cause in I'm a second. Because thi- I'm <laughs> no, thinking. No, I, I, I'm, I'm agreeing and I'm, disagreeing with a lot of things we were both Well, saying. I'm yeah. thinking that... It's interesting because if we're talking about guitar styles and guitar stylings, the two guitar attack yeah. of the strokes mm-hmm. is one way to interpret television. Another way would be real estate, would be to soften it up and yeah. go more adventure, really. Yeah. And more like, um, you know, the more is, melodic this is, this side is of the it. ranker brain in me, but okay. more technical. A little bit more technical. technical. A little mathier. A little technical. A little bit more math. A little more rock. prog. It's more, little it's more prog. like the parts are very precise. A little more John Anderson from Te- Yes also likes Verlaine. You television know? is, sure. is <laughs> you know? very like loose and ragged. But it's like difficult. I mean, I just learned well, for sure. But they're playing live and they're just ripping solos. But I can't believe it because I'm reading the 33 and a third about Marky Moon and about how they they can't fucking string a couple chords together. Yeah. And I know this is the second record, but we just learned. We literally just recorded days, which is why it's yeah. amazing that you asked that. It's going to come out as like a promo for That's the 10 year so anniversary thing. Amazing. Um, and I had to learn the bass part, obviously, and it was it it's took hard. me a lot of takes I, I to get it imagine, down. It's like yeah. this is a great musical. rhythm section, it's difficult yeah. television. Yeah, I drummer, always thought that was the secret weapon. I really. like the ride. He's always on the ride. He's but I didn't precise. envy Julian for having to learn that right lead hand. part. Always on the. It's never just yeah. too, too, it's always too, 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 yeah. always very yeah. Jackson like actually. That's what I mean. Yeah. He's got he's fun to watch. Jackson never saw that guy miss a beat. Never saw him drop a beat once. There you go. On that tour, I'll relate. And I was watching. Yeah, you, you, and I was you were, listening. You were on his ass, <laughs> and he never. You were ready did. to. You were ready to step in. And he used to smoke weed, man, before the show. Still does, man. <laughs> yeah, and he'd be out there, and he just cool as a cucumber. Get on there, because I, I did. I had a little bit of a journey as a drummer with Devin. You remember Devin Williams? Yeah. And I tell you, there were a couple times I smoked weed. Boy, I could not play drums like that. So I was always impressed with Jackson. Yep, well, for sure. He's good. Great player. Uh, but to to hear what you're saying, I guess I know what you mean about the strokes being not very velvety. Yeah. The vocals are pretty different. New I York think. City energy though. Yeah, and I think but I think there's other bands you could even draw comparisons to like New York Dolls or something. But that's what I'm saying like, like the, the Velvet Underground was just like it's like the Beatles like pull it out. But they're of the also air, two you know? guitar attack too, the Velvet. So like that's kind of a New York thing. I feel like television got that from them a little bit too, like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but well they're the first indie band, right, I guess. Television no, Velvets. Do you think they're more punk? Are they the first punk band? Stooges maybe is the first mm-hmm. punk band. Mm-hmm. NC5 mm-hmm. maybe. Yeah, Stooges. I mean, it depends how you mean. I mean, you can make an argument for the kinks even. How far do you want to go back? What about back? Dylan, like, man? <laughs> <laughs> I think Stooges MC5 is pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, Stooges like 68. Like, you know what I Fucking mean? Fucking Stooges, man. <laughs> Fucking stooges, yeah. How okay, about- so wait, this all bringing it around for me, you know. Yeah. Given Thirteenth Floor Elevators, maybe not the resonant band for you guys, but uh, no. What? Let me finish. Uh, television. Yeah. Ranked objectively, and Queen. Queen. Who's the better band? 
Television are in a different ranking, right? Well, I'm, I'm just trying to... They're both bands, They right? used to be... No, one was a Pitchfork-style ranking bands, and it's like, okay, so you got ABBA now. Well, that's what I'm trying... That's where the point ABBA I'm... never get in these classic... The 34 Elevators shouldn't even be in a classic rock format. James, the problem ABBA, is television, and Queen. Woo. Rank it now. ABBA, in terms of one. objectively... Just rank it. <laughs> objectively... Rank it. Rank it. ABBA, Queen, television. Oof. Wow. Wow. I'm going to ABBA Television Queen. But that's you're just into television. I love television. Yeah. I just I just Right, so this is the point I'm trying to make about the ranker like, the ranker crowd, too. you know? I think we're yeah. kind of a poppy podcast. That's the thing. Like I don't think we're really thir- I mean, I think if you listen to like technically but here's my other guess. I mean, and maybe can we bring up some like ranker disco stuff? Yeah. Because it feels like a the ranker crowd is also a rock crowd. Like okay, I mean, I, it's like kind of like a white say. male rock. Oh, well, crowd. definitely Dude, that. This yeah. is what I was gonna say is like I couldn't. I sort of forgot when I was like defending ranker as yeah. being like the world's view. Yeah. That actually it's like pretty racist. Yeah. We were yeah. looking at like what you were ranking something earlier from ranker that was uh that was. The top celebrities you can trust. Oh my god! And they were all like white. Keanu Reeves. Well, Keanu was up there for <laughs> yeah. sure. Morgan Keanu Freeman was in one. there. Uh, uh, not Morgan Freeman. He I was. Guess. Three. <laughs> he's on the list, yeah, though. yeah, that's yeah. good. Well, he's that's problematic, and I don't know if it's this kind of podcast, but that's like the magical Negro kind of things creeping. I think in. you know yeah. that would be the yeah that would be a, a mm-hmm. way of saying it. Mm-hmm. If you want to get down a disco, we can get down. What's well, that's what I want to say. Like, it's like for me. Number now, one was Tom I, Hanks. I feel happy to live in this era that I'm in. <laughs> a disco. Number one is Tom Hanks, obviously. Like for <laughs> what? Like it's not celebrities Bee-Gees? you can trust. <laughs> what? That's twisted. I didn't. I didn't know. I've never even heard that record. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I listen to like Cool in the Gang or something like that now. Without having to choose a cultural side of the coin. Are we going bands Disco or songs? versus rock. Well, that's just dumb. And then, no, but I'm just like... Oh, no, this not is, you. This I is mean, some of the greatest music ever of made. Of course. You know, ob- objectively. And and trying to apply the ranker scale to well, it. Cool like, and the gang how good like, is the bass playing? You know, like, Well, Cool and the Gang would be like, I'd say, like 10th best. Maybe disco band. Uh-huh. Yeah. Disco band. <laughs> okay. Well, Queen being number one. <laughs> yeah, for another well, one. Another one. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, there, I, there's quite a few Queen disco-y songs, but no, it's got to be Bee Gees number yeah, one. Yeah, of course it has. Abba number two. Yeah, yeah. Is that a, th- is that a category? Disco band. Dude, <laughs> everything <laughs> you want. Three, I can, <laughs> you can look up anything you want yeah. on this. Number three. Um, it's gonna be tough. It's not chic. I was gonna say chic. Yeah. It's you know what I think it's Donna Summer and I think it's just I mean this is Donna is, Summer a band no but they allow it's, they allow they this. allow but that. you know what yeah. that's kind of interesting because that kind of books your trend a little bit gay icon yeah you know African American woman who is mostly famous for like I suppose I guess hot stuff. Well, I will survive, I guess. Is Queen I on the Gloria disco Gaynor. band? Is, is, yeah, probably. Is probably. Queen on the disco band? Ranking, yeah, they're, it, they're uh, bound to be. Where are they? Donna yeah. Summer, everybody loves hot stuff. Oh, do, I mean, everybody Spring loves Spring Affair stuff. is really my Donna yeah. Summer jam. I, Queen are number six. Number six? Disco bands? They're but, ahead of Bone. Okay, M. this is what I want to know. How many top tens have Queen made it into? Is, can we think of those, other categories that Queen are? I can do that very oh, easily. Yeah. You can find it very <laughs> easily. Yeah. I'll go one further, though, Bleaker, and say that I would say that what the disco producers were doing in the late 70s was above and beyond what the rock producers were doing. Those Harrison consoles. Much better. Like, I thought that was, like, more forward thinking musically than what, what where, where things were going if you in, take, in, mo- in pop rock. You take the production of Donna Summer's Spring Affair and pit it against any television song... No contest. Well, I don't even mean television because that was more like the punk kind of avant garde. But any of it's stuff that I, I mean, would consider, like, from my pitchfork point of view, very highly ranked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. make the distinction between pitchfork and Condé Nast pitchfork when you talk about your pitchfork point of view. I mean, I, I think that I can firmly speak for most pitchfork readers, you know, yeah. and, and we as a subset are, are a you little. Can speak uh, for most pitchfork writers. We're, we're a little. We're a little disappointed after you know in the way that pitchfork has gone after the Condé you know takeover. Takeover. Yeah. What about you? Mean what you're about, not a fan of like certified lover boy? I like, well, neither is Pitchfork. What about Donda? 
I don't, you know, I've, I've, I've we should off. be doing a kind of listening party if we yeah, wanted to be more true. on the pitchfork you know, I, Bleaker, I, I really don't know what they're into these days. I can tell Williams you they're into Berg, the <laughs> new Laurel Canyon in the, in the, you called it the aughts. That's the, the 20, late, the, the late aughts. The noughties. Yeah. That's the uh, 2000s. I would, co- yeah, like the, yeah, like mid, you know, the 2005, new, a kind of new Jerusalem. Let's say 2006 to 2000. You were telling me on the phone yesterday that yeah. you were like, let me tell you, you called me and you said, hey, Johnny, let me tell you something, man. You know, yeah. he's like, you what's t- up? He called me, Bleaker kind of sounded like this. He said, let me tell you something, man. I hear you fucking guys talking all the time about fucking Laurel Canyon and shit yep, yep. back like 50 years ago, man. Yeah. Who gives a shit, dude? He's like, let me tell you something, man. Back when I was living in Williamsburg, dude, like in 2007, man, yeah. that was fucking the new Laurel Canyon. He said, we did it better, Well, bro. you know, he's doing, a, he's doing a bit of a character, but the point I was trying to make here <laughs> is that, uh, you know, like, it's, it's really easy to, uh, you know, we... Maybe on this podcast we call it, you know, the Beatles of, but, but, uh, but, but I like to seek out what is, you know, like is Strathcona the Williamsburg of Vancouver? Like ranking you know, hipster is, communities? Yeah, like is, is, you know, is, uh, is, is this coffee shop this, that we went to this afternoon before the podcast that I got all hopped up on espresso on kind of like a Williamsburg sort More of, of a vibe. Silver Lake vibe over here, uh, I'd say. Well, the question that I have to... Well, now it's... Is Silver Lake the Williamsburg of L.A.? It was. And the question... Now that's more Highland Park. I'm positing now is like, is Williamsburg the Laurel Canyon? <laughs> I think of the arts. But you know? isn't Williamsburg the East Village of the arts? Because of because it's an East, you're, it's a coastal thing. Well, I'm just thinking CBG. But I'm, and I'm going stuff. like fully global. You know. Yeah. Oh, you're going global. You know, like launch pad to national scale. You know, Todd P show to like. So we're going Pitchfork th- best new music to all of a sudden you're playing at the Biltmore in Vancouver or something like. that. Well, that's what know? I was going to say. Mount Pleasant to me is more the will at that time was more the Williamsburg of Vancouver. I think. The Main Street area more than Strathcona, wouldn't you say, James? I would say that, yeah, and maybe Strathcona was like more of kind of like an East East Village, Lower East Side kind of energy, more kind of residential, more of a kind of Greenpoint. Well, I would say the other way around. It's like it's not a it's like not across the bridge. Oh, I see. So I'm thinking it's more like Manhattan. I'm thinking of like downtown well, geographically. Geographically. Yeah, no, geographically I'm just ranking. culturally. Like I'm saying like maybe Grizzly Bear is like CSNY. You know, they're doing that kind of like... Well, no, that's Army Fleet Foxes. Thing. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Grizzly right. Bear would more be kind of... They're kind of... They, they kind of amalgamate like... Radiohead into the mix, but so maybe and Beach Boys and, yeah. and yeah. Animal Collective. So you know who they are? They're like America. No, they're, they're like the they're Thirteen like, Floor Elevators. Pulling, <laughs> no, no, I think Thirteen Floor Elevators. Thirteen Floor is like Dead Meadow or something. Right? Oh, that's more the Burger. I think it's somebody thing. who like never even really like like everybody thought they were really going to go. Yeah, exactly. Thirteen Floor Elevators. That's like, a little, that's a bit on the nose. Yeah, but, but you know, like Jason Grimmer's bands in Vancouver. A lot like of those nasty bands. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris yeah, kind of, them in. The, yeah. ba- the <laughs> band's band. You know, uh, Shiloh's a little bit. I hate to say it. You are know? like who? Not not musically, but like all the bands were into the Shiloh. Those, you know, it's like man, yeah. like fresh and never, only, and it maybe. never, it never quite made the jump to yeah. the to the punters, you know, yeah, I mean? yeah, because yeah, yeah, he yeah. didn't but, have the email of Ian Cohen, you know, exactly, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or the like, game is rigged, man. Yeah, but it's like it's, it's a goddamn almost, way of life. almost, you know, like a Cass McCombs kind of feel, like a musician's musician. Yeah, you know, like, I see. definitely. Cass is probably the top top musician's bands, musician. Like bands if we love were to rank, yeah. <laughs> if we Cass were, is yeah. the top. No one else has heard of. Ron Sexsmith. Sex Bands maybe. love him. Oh, you don't know Cass? Bands like, love him. No, Ron Sexsmith as well. Because he's like got McCartney <laughs> and Costello on his side. Like, M- Sexsmith has like McCartney, Costello, Chris Martin. Like, he's like right up there with all these but guys. No who, like, one we, in the States knows who he is. I don't know who he is. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But he's up there in terms of like, he's pissed. Mm-hmm. You know? Because he gets covered by like. Like that Feist cover, you know these things are. Oh well, she's she's notorious for that, you know, stealing people's songs. Not stealing, but just like going into like like she did a Little Wings thing, you know, like going into the like beloved band's band pop song and like blah, you know, which is which is admirable. It's a honestly, move. you she's could a say cutthroat it's, businessman, you know, Canadian. I, I feel like Certainly. I feel like Destroyer 
do both where he's a little band, bit but they're kind of big yeah, too yeah are you friends with that guy of course yeah 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 james and i both know that a lot of those that guy wouldn't even Behar. know who i uh would he ever deign to uh, grace the, the grace the microphone of this podcast dan has not yet to be on but i'm gonna get Let's him call on. him out i'm getting yeah. him on I'm well, he's him on. he's down in strathcona we'll pass him all the time when i'm going to get absolutely my pastel de natas and espresso from he Union sings Market. about it man you listen to those early that, destroyer so, records He's talking. I don't about want to out anybody, but my wife lived across the street from that market. Yeah, and so would see him all the time. As yeah, well. yeah, he's yeah. always there. He's a very yeah. recognizable guy. Yeah, I was once in a I was once in a on the street once in a studio when he family. when he bought he came in and bought a distresser from a studio I was in. So if anyone went, what does it to do? Know, it distresses. I think he's kind of interested in kind of <laughs> probably using it on his vocals. I'd imagine. Just Have you ever used a pedal called an enhancer? A pedal. Yeah. No. Boss guitar pedal enhancer. Now we're talking. Is it just kind of an Aphex it, kind of style thing? It just thing? enhances. Yeah, like yeah. a loudness thing. I can tell you that the distressor was heavily used in JCDC Studios. Of course. So that's a big... Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a workhorse kind yeah. of compressor. A lot of people... It's like, I would say it's a good first compressor to get for anyone. Yeah. Because it's, you know, industry standard. So yeah, there is a is. gearhead uh, contingency of Impossible Way of Life so. fandom. We don't know, yeah. man. Well, who, well, who is, I, I, you know, Johnny kind of threw me under the bus. He told me about how, you know, he, he told you all about my, my Williamsburg Laurel Canyon theory. Well, yeah. And, and well, you know, what he also shared with me, know. what he also shared with me during the same conversation is that you guys are sort of, you know, you're kind of taking off. You're elevating. There's a sort of dedicated fan base. It's, it's modest, but it's, it's growing. We're on the 12th floor, not yet the 13th. Yeah, but, well, you know, you like know. what I, you know, there's a bigger crowd. You're not necessarily just uh, going to be toiling in uh, obscurity forever, and so I'm here to caution you from from my sort of pitchfork okay. side of things. Thank you. you know, thank God. You know, these are the early days. Maybe we're coming right up against the end of the early days here. Yeah, and you're really at risk of getting really shitty, like third record. You know, oh, like oh, impossible way of. You're not there yet. You're still here. You know, this is the good stuff. You know, but like. Yeah. You're really at risk of alienating a lot of those early fans by, oh, yeah, impossible way of life, you know. I dug the early stuff. I like the early yeah, stuff. Yeah, I like the early Atlas stuff. Atlas was good, the, though. Yeah, well, you know, but it'll never catch the... I mean, you got you got real estate fans who will say, like, anything after record one is bullshit. I like that you one. Know? That was on Wood System. Yeah, and if you can... I'm hit, like Nardward. If, if it's with, beyond... With real estate, Yeah, Nardward loved the first record. Haven't heard from him since. Frankly, I have a copy you know? of the first <laughs> one. I have a copy of the first one on vinyl. Do you think it's worth any money? I think it might be worth a on, cool on cool fifty. Side. It might have maintained its value of like fifteen dollars or something. You think like so? American, yeah, yeah. fifteen American. You're better off with that first thirteenth floor elevators. I think tell I you got what, that too, tell actually, you what. but pro- it's certainly not original. <laughs> I don't think, but I have it because they play like a conch and stuff through a space echo mm-hmm. pedals. Mm-hmm. I don't even know. But I appreciate it's like what Kim you're saying. Man. I you just just heed my warning. We're gonna that, do our best. Yeah. Not as a guy who's been who's had the early lo-fi days. And then, you know, like, I, those, We're those, gonna do those our cool kid fans, to, they'll turn on you, man. We're going to do our best not to sell out. But let me also tell you this. If, uh, you know... Uh, if you want anything selling on this podcast, yeah, I'm willing to do it. If Enhancer Pedals are yeah. listening yeah. <laughs> and they want us to talk about them on the air, say no more. We're yeah, on the I mean, I think I think sell out by all means, you know, just, just maintain. Well, I'm kind of coming more add it more from like a hip-hop perspective okay where yeah. like you're allowed to do that stuff absolutely i'm not coming from it from a pitchfork perspective well i think well, you should it's just it's just these bands as long as you the- guys are talking about like i listen to queen abba donna summer that kind of stuff we're yeah. kind of angel olsen you know like <laughs> more kind of i don't know i guess maybe lord's new record stuff like that but like that's I, kind of pitchfork. But, but you know yeah. big thief you know you that's talk a really lot about that's really power. there's depth there. cat power's yeah. old pitchfork yeah yeah, yeah. Right. moon picks it's the only one worth listening to yeah. right if on i pitchfork. liked uh, the greatest yeah, but in terms she's of she's got Pitchfork. Al Green's band on it. Yeah, I saw her when she played. I Richards. saw that show. It was yeah, great. It was, but it kind of grossed me out that you had all these people kind of like crying, begging her to keep playing. It's like she doesn't need to play. Like right. she's good. Like she can just go. Oh no, that stuff was always. Yeah. A- that's part of the show. I know it is. Yeah. It's the shtick. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You want to do magnetic fields? Were they? Are they uh, old no. Pitchfork? But I'm a big fan. Me too. Great. Yeah. Yeah, they're not really full pitchfork. Pitchfork would more be like girls. I think they're of old. Your era. They're girls of my pitchfork. era, but magnetic fields. Early pitchfork, you know, 
it's just Schreiber on like a blue background. Poor on web design. That's magnetic fields, man. Yeah. 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 Spoon, maybe. Definitely Spoon is like like a hot new band. In that Trail era. of the Dead. And you will know us by a the lot of Trail of Dead. Yeah. yeah I saw those that. guys in Brixton. That's Was cool. it the One most time. dangerous show you'd ever been yes. to? Yes. I felt like people were thing people say people were like get like getting knocked out at those shows. They were by throwing get, their amps they throw into shit the crowd. You. Yeah, that's like amps. That's dude. terrible. And then jumping in the crowd and fist fighting. That people. stuff would never fly now. You know, like that being champion is like this is edgy, badass stuff. It's just like this is trauma. This is traumatic. You know, like yeah. that. That's not gonna go over in today's. No, I had you're a good time. You don't think you're allowed to throw an amp anymore at an audience member? No way. Probably man. not. No. Only in the underground. It was Brixton was pretty rough. That I was about sixteen or something. Like yeah, where was that? Shepherd's Bush Empire. It's a nice place. No, Wait, sorry, the Brixton, Brixton Academy. Or it might have been Brixton, Brixton Academy. Academy. I don't know, yeah. but it was like you know, it was before it became the Williamsburg of London. You know, what about the? Is there? Okay, Shepherd's Bush. I I think I've played there. Actually, yeah, you probably have. That was a big place. Kind of a theater with the big that place. Days era. But what about in Shepherd's Bush? There's another one that's like kind of an old school. Um, like mirrors on either side of the hall. You're going to get a lot of DMs from our London contingent telling you because I don't know. Oh, you don't if know? You know what Alex is talking about, fi- uh, just find him on Instagram. Shepherd's and- Bush. It's just like in, sh- it's called like the Shepherd's Bush or something. Well, you're like gonna that. Get it's really hard to nail now. down what the Williamsburg of London is now because it's always changing. Always changing. Because it was Dalston. It moves around. Hackney, obviously. Yeah. What about like maybe Shoreditch for a while? Originally in the nineties. Yeah. yeah, and then like Stoke Newington, maybe that kind of was the same time. Where's the rough trade? And now Brixton, I know, is very, very hip. Where's that rough trade? The Brick Lane or whatever. Brick Lane, that kind of that that's that's a, just a gentrified part of Got London it. now. Yeah, but what? But it's nice though down there. Isn't there that rough trade there over there though? That record shop. Yeah. 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 yeah, I also like uh, you know pre that would have been Camden Britpop, right? Mm-hmm. Right. You could probably still see Graham Coxon hanging out there, King of the Walk. You know what I mean? I mean, he's cool. I was he's my favorite member. of He'd Blur. be yeah. in the pantheon of like real estate guitarists. He's yeah. Let's like, not talk inspires, about that. He's like yeah. uh, <laughs> that's definitely true. Yeah. Though. He's a uh, he's like a. Uh, Kind of like an Albert Hammond Jr. figure, you know, sure. Gistar- guitarist with mystique. Also, S- number two guy. You know? Also, like, interesting that he managed to play that way with a Marshall. I always thought it was very interesting. Mm-hmm. He played a Marshall with an attenuator and a Telecaster, and I thought, I, to me, his tone was all yeah, because you don't think uh, you don't think uh, Telecaster when you think Marshall, you think Les Paul. Exactly. Yeah, I don't understand a Marshall amp, man. Yeah. You know, I've never used one. Never. Yeah. What uh, what do you me? Um, I've used them before, but uh, I don't get the plexi thing. I'm, I don't know how you do it. I'm like yeah. more of a Fender Princeton guy. Princeton, an oh. old Princeton. Yeah. I'll Perfect take amp. I'll take a moment to plug my friend uh, Tim and his uh, his uh, Milkman amplifiers. Kind of like a uh, kind of like a boutique oh, you know, kind boutique of boutique Fender guy. You know, see they're on a different makes list. Fender the way di- different list. That's totally what I'm trying to say. List. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, good. Where's he though? based out of? Uh, Bay Area, San Francisco. Very cool. What yeah. else do you long, think? Long, 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 great history. You know, of, uh, oh. actually, I'll bring it. Around. You know, he sell he he sold an amp to John Mayer. Are you serious? He did. Mayer's got one that put wow. him on the map. Yeah, That's he got huge. the Mayer bump. just for the new for the new stuff. No, he's got a he's stuff, got or? like a contract with PRS or something like that. That makes sense. Oh play, you know. yeah. Um, well, because Mayer's why a he, signature PRS. I don't know if you have mm-hmm. you seen his PRS. It's just a strat. Well, it's a yeah. mini strap. He's just strap. like, give me a PRS it's a mini strap. and make it look exactly like a strap, but you can put that ugly little head. Well, we have a theory yeah. about that. Yeah, I'm sure you do. That's why I brought it up. The mm-hmm. theory yeah. there is that he isn't allowed to have a, a, a strat style guitar that's it's like bigger than Bob's. Blackie. No, like the Eric, Eric Clapton's, Clapton's oh. guitar. It has to be smaller. Because he's the child. He's kind of the offspring of that. And he when Clapton, Clapton goes, yeah. he'll be able to have a full size guitar. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I mean, this is PRS sneaking in because they'll say, "Hey, we'll build you a Strat, whatever you want." What do you, you know, think? Just well, don't do that. PRS car. will just say, "You know, oh. you can play that Strat all you want, but if you want to stay in tune, yeah, you know, you need a PRS mm-hmm. exactly." Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you think um, is the second worst Beatles song? Oh, that's a good one. Second worst behind uh, Revolution. I nine. got Yoko has to be involved with it, you know, because because there's a lot of misogyny in Beatles fandom. They hate, Yoko. but there is no Yoko Beatles song. Well, n- Rev Number no. Nine is kind of a Yoko influence. Well, yeah, I would suggest, like, you know. Um, 
I mean, I have some, but they're not going to be, there'll be more pitchforky opinions. Like, I always thought Run For Your Life was a really bad song. Um, oh, just because of the content of the lyrics? And just, I just don't think it's a good song. Um, you talk about bad Beatles lyrics or problematic ones. Norwegian Wood is really rough. I love the song. It's getting better all the time. Well, I yeah. used to be rude well, to my woman. I beat her. Do you know the Norwegian story behind Wood, Norwegian though. Wood? Yeah, that he it was like kind of an, a one night stand with not a, woman. a one night stand. She wouldn't sleep with him. Oh, and he was so upset about it. You know, like she told me she worked in the morning and started to laugh. Yeah, that's like he's going for it sexually, and she's like, I work in the morning. You know, I'm tired. And he said, I told her I didn't crawled up to sleep in the bath you but know. that implies in the lyric that he's accepted the decision no but he's mad about it not that he like forced himself oh and then he burns her, the house down at burns, the end so i lit a fire isn't it good norwegian right he's yeah, so no, mad know, yeah, that she refused yeah. to sleep with I him because because they chatted for a couple hours yeah well that he we all know john uh well, when he has a few when he has a few brandies kind of uh, yeah, brandy alexander's he yeah. turned he turns into dr hyde mm -hmm. and gets a little hands around the throat he apologized all for it all in double fantasy though you know so bless him and then they run for your lives number 22 22 worst. Uh, what how many on the list um i don't know like a lot i mean, I mean so, yellow submarine i don't want to press the oh, next yellow page thing because that's worked. my worst, that's the worst i think that's song. the worst song i hate that song yeah it's a terrible song. It's horrible. No, I mean, that's not even... It's, it's not like, even on there. That's like top 10 best on Ranker. Yeah. See, the Ranker uh, crowd, we can't Wild Honey Pie is number two. Yeah, right. And What's that's, the one? That's now? Artie. That's an, you know, the Ranker crowd doesn't like the Artie stuff. Dig It's number three. What about Bung Dig It Rules? Bungalow Bill? It's Jam and Blues. That's not a song. Dig It's awesome. Um, interesting. Why don't we do it in a row at number 11? Yeah, I know that's on there. So is the last song on that list the best Beatles? Wild song? Honey Pie makes sense. Well, I can tell you the What's best the... Beatles song. If you want, do you want to wait, try wait, wait. I want to know song? before no, 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 before no. we get the best, which is probably Here Comes the Sun. I want to know what. <laughs> like a slip. I want to know what the last ranked worst Beatles. Well, song I don't want to press the next page button because it probably will like lock me out or give me a. Some ads oh, because to is there read. a paywall on Ranker? You know what? I just in don't my want opinion, to turn my ad blocker. Is there a paywall on Ranker? I, and if there is, some listener of this podcast needs to buy you guys a subscription to Ranker. Listen, like, there's no button. paywall. I'll yeah. press the button. It's, it's just funny to say, why don't we do it in the road? Okay, like, the last one is the, is number sixty six. Yeah. The last one. Oh no, no number fifty four is the last one on the list here, and it's I am the Walrus. <laughs> what? <laughs> so that's the best. Bad Beatles song. Yeah, but like Happiness and Warm Gun isn't on the list, or those ones. Or Get no, Back no, 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 isn't no. on the list. No, I like Get Back not. actually. Get Back's in my top. So five you think Here Comes the Sun's number one? Yeah. You number one on Ranker or okay, Hey I gotta, Jude? Hey Jude. I got. I was gonna say Hey Jude on Ranker. Hey Jude, let it be. Here comes the sun. Not let it be. Not let it be. Oh, uh, oh, wait, wait. Here's my hot take before we get onto this. One of the worst Beatles songs. Uh, truly feel this way. Long and Winding Road. Yeah, that's one of the worst. I for hate sure. that song. Definitely one of yeah. the. You know the ones I think are bad. George fans will hate me. Are some of the ones on Yellow Summer, like it's all too much. Mm. Do you like, like? Do you like Within You Without You? Love Within yeah. You Without yeah. You. I love his Indian stuff. Yeah. Their songs yeah. are really. See, good. that's problematic. Probably at this point. I bet some of the that is. They're but beautiful songs though. Like I like the lyrics and. Yeah, I bet some of the rankers don't like "Within You, Without You" though. Well, you're going to be shocked at yeah. what's number one because it doesn't fit into your okay. kind of cool. rationale of how that. the rankers work. Help, uh, a day in the life. Yes, uh, no, that works because it's like that's like that's like this one's really deep. That, yeah. that, that is like the objectively best one because it's Sgt. Pepper, the objectively most important Beatles album, according to the ranker crowd. Here comes the sun's number three. Okay. Also number one on best songs about the sun. <laughs> okay. Wait, is number two then? Given this, is number two like another Abbey Road thing? Like uh, no, like like the end or like it carry, could be come carry together. That, carry that way. But or I don't think so. Yeah. I'm gonna go with something like maybe like. Um, Wouldn't you put side two of Abbey Road as the number one best Beatles song? You know, if you were <laughs> if you riding were, for Pitchfork. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, you know I, where I'm coming from. Yeah, I don't know. I'm missing it, but yeah. I in don't. my life. 
that's a that's beautiful great. song. That's my number one. That's like a number one. That's contender my number for sure. one. That's a great song. Wow, I finally aligned with <laughs> Ranker. See, you guys are changing your opinion a little bit here. Well, let's get on to something a bit more important than the best and worst Beatles songs. Yeah. How about top songs about fruit? Okay. Songs with fruit in the title. Mm-hmm. Strawberry Fields Forever. That's number one. Yeah. Uh, Peaches by the President of the United States of six. America. <laughs> That's number six. That's number six. What about... Um, what about the Teaches of Peaches, you know? Uh, like, raspberry Beret. Number two. Mm-hmm. Um, Orange Blossom Special <laughs> um, by Johnny Cash. I'm looking down here. <laughs> How about uh, uh, Coconut? Harry Nelson. Coconut's Lyman. sitting in at number... Uh, yeah, we're at number 11 with Coconut. No, number 7, actually. And Lime, also, you know, two... F- is coconut Strange Fruit. fruit. Oh, Strange that's a really good song. Really that should good be number song. one. Yeah. That should be number well, one. Well, that wouldn't be objective, though, would it? That would be in terms of, like... Or in terms of, like, historically yeah, what's culturally most important. Culturally important. Yeah. Also, great performance, though. Come great on, yeah. song. Yeah. What about uh, The Lemon Song by Led Zeppelin? Um, I... Already, I'm not looking at the also, fruit Also, strange one. fruit doesn't really count because that's not a specific fruit. Well, it's not a fruit, is it? Yeah. What's not, wrong with being yeah. sexy? <laughs> not a fruit. Okay, what about every song in Tommy, the musical, ranked by singability? <laughs> I don't even know what song like, in it. I don't Pinball know the names Wizard? of any of the songs. Pinball Wizard's probably hard to sing. I would think. What about just like the one that goes see me, feel Pimple me, Wizard, touch me, that, me? Okay, that's two. <laughs> that, aren't that's they two. all that song? That hard <laughs> They're to sing. all oh, that's, that song. That's easy to sing, according feel to Rick. No, I guess like it, Pinball Wizard's number one. Singable? I got it. I think it maybe that feels hardest like to sing. Hardest, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And that's about all I know Such of that record. I, uh, the Wicked Uncle Ernie song? Really dark. I don't know any other songs on that. That one's really dark. Maybe we can just finish off here with my favorite um, ranked um, of all the. Is this top ranked in your favorite ranking category? For now, yeah. Um, it's it's someone's taken the time to rank the last meals of ten music legends. So they've looked into <laughs> what people have eaten as their last meal, and then decided who had the best last meal. But we don't know any of them. <laughs> that's, well, that's probably, that's, if you think about that's it, that's you know, musical a like okay, ephemera that Mama escapes Cass, me. The ham sandwich? Number five. Yeah. Oh, brutal. That's disgusting. That's brutal. Not how she died, by you the way. You know what John yeah. Lennon had for his last meal? Was it like um, steak and ice cream or what? something? He had a corned beef sandwich. Wow. Yeah, which he, is number six. Was he coming back from dinner? A lot of sandwiches, actually, in this list. <laughs> Hendrix, tuna salad. That's his. Is that a better than corned beef? Or like, are no, we ranking, it's not as good. Are we ranking? Are we ranking the sandwich itself? I feel like there's some what bias we, for people yeah, who like, like the sandwich. Are we ranking the sandwich or like the story or what? No, I think you know? it's the sandwich because people Just like the better sandwich. choice. Yeah. Just better the order. If I was to but go, but he didn't know it was the last meal. It's not well, like it the executioner matter. was there. No, but it's like if you like if you ev- gonna live go. everything like it's your last. Well, I'll say this, meal. you know, like because this is a sort of slant appropriate because you guys posted the meme of. Uh, James Gal- Gandolfini with the Nielsen Schmielsen cover yeah, yeah. today. I did. And yeah. everybody talks about Gandolfini had a great last meal. What what was like that? he was like, they were in Italy or something, nice. and he was like head of the table, and he was like, everybody eat up tonight. We're going to celebrate life. And he died yeah. the, uh, that That's night. That's good. Yeah. A proper last meal. Yeah. Yeah. Sinatra, grilled cheese sandwich. Oh, Elvis, peanut butter, and banana, and bacon kind of thing. Yeah, ice cream and cookies. That's on there? Yeah, that's just, on there. Just no, no. because we can ice guess. Ice cream and cookies? I would say... Um, I would say <laughs> Jim Morrison, sweet and sour Chinese food, number two. Everybody knows that? He had that in France? <laughs> in Paris he had that? <laughs> In Paris? <laughs> Isn't that where he died? Didn't that's the thing you got to consider where the did corned Morrison, beef sandwich in New York okay, so for Lennon, that's probably a good sandwich. Did, he was at the Carnegie Deli. That did Morrison good. He was die? actually at the stage deli. The Morrison died in Paris, right? Yeah. yeah. So why are you eating Chinese food in Paris? Yeah. You know? yeah. I don't like that. Shouldn't be number two. Uh, okay. I think this is probably almost certainly not number one, and I don't even know if it's true, but is there like a Jerry Garcia, Hagen dazs kind of, you know... Kind oh, of thing on there. Well, he's wouldn't he'd be more of a Ben and Jerry's guy. No, I think that was just you know, he really it was like Hagen dazs vanilla was like a vice. It like put him in the diabetic coma. But they like named a ice cream after posthumously him. though Ben and Jerry's. Yeah, didn't they? I don't know if he was eating. Cher- he was. He's not the type of guy to eat his own flavor. He's more modest. Than, so? More modest than that. Yeah. Un- unwilling uh, 
Anyway, I, we're getting one? off topic here. The grilled cheese. Sinatra's Sinatra grilled cheese. cheese. That's number one. Yeah. But cheese. Elvis is on it. And he was yeah. like 90 when he died. Like, that's not exciting. <laughs> Who Somebody... said that? Like, his maid? Oh, yeah, he had a grilled Somebody cheese. Somebody made well, him a grilled cheese. Right now. Was Sinatra was a late riser, often getting out of bed during <laughs> the early afternoon. His typical day. Um, oh, the crooner went about his daily routine and had a grilled cheese sandwich. Although Every he day. didn't, he didn't finish the whole thing. Finished did he, the whole thing. Did he and die in the middle? He had he a heart attack of, later that day. And no, it's cedars. He didn't have a much of an appetite on the day. Well, that he buddy, died. let me tell you, you have a grilled cheese for every day for lunch. That'll clog up the. He old made it arteries. pretty far though, considering how hard he must have lived. Yeah, know? he did. Okay, here's uh, like maybe because I'm having a good time here. Maybe uh, just something to really get you going because I get a sense that you're like not really. I mean, you sort of. Sp- I suppose like sports psychologists, criminal like criminologists, getting into the minds of the, of the ranker. Of the ranker. I'm impressed. Yeah. I mean, because we're I'm like, so deep, we're in. No, but have you ever watched like Mind Hunter on Netflix? Yeah, it's you know, similar. Like, that's me. You know? Yeah, it's similar well, to that. I was thinking more like an Inception kind of like you know, we're well, in. you're Inception, but I'm the Mind Hunter deprogrammer. Yeah. In you're going in. You're like more of a you're Michael the local Mann cops thing. who can't see beyond the community at large, right. and I want to. I'm Moneyball. You know, I'm using the it's metrics true, here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's true. This Inception stuff, you're right, yeah. man. See, even that. Yeah. I yeah. can't think yeah. past our, it's, our own it's, references. It's Copland yeah. with Sylvester Stallone, you know, like. <laughs> you're so right. Well, how about I put you in a kind of bit of a parallax view style, yeah. like Clockwork Orange room, and really test your metal with what are Ranker's top non-archival Grateful Dead albums. I want the order, and I want it correct. What do you mean... <laughs> Non archival, like not not live shows. No, no, not yeah, not dicks picks. No, no, not. they can be live. S- I so think. studio albums. They can be live. Oh, oh but non archival, like release. What are Ranker's top release? Warner Brothers. One release. is American Beauty. Okay. Two is Working Man. It's true. Three is Europe seventy two. Yes. Four <laughs> is. Uh, I want. God damn! Say I want you to get this. Four so bad. is hard, but um, um, I'm gonna say Blues for Allah. Wake of the Flood? No, Live from no, the Mars you're Hotel. Out. Oh, Li- oh no. Live Dead. Live, live Dead. Dead. Live Dead, of course. Uh, well, if you, because they can be live. live I was Dead. going like full yeah, you, studio. Well, yeah, you, you need to get... You need to, listen, I know. You, those I know. mistakes... I, well, I, I was going in, in mind, as full when Dead. When you're in Mind Hunter, no, those mistakes will cost you. Live Dead is better, but do they have like... Do they have like... Dick's Picks isn't in there. Like, or like, what about one from the vault, two from the vault? Well, those I mean, count. Those are let's archival. Just think, now you're like losing it. Yeah. Okay. Well, I it. felt really good about getting the first three. Yeah. What yeah. do you think is five? five? Terrapin Station is okay. number five. Okay. Not a huge studio dead guy. I, I, I have to admit, you know. I was gonna go. What are uh, you? In the dark. Just a head. You know, more of a more of a like, uh, you know, uh, dead and company notwithstanding, a guy in the parking lot. You know. How do you okay. feel about uh, John May's decision to wear? Audio Technica MX M70X headphones on stage, so he can feel more immersed in Get the music. more into the music. Did he? Did he? Is that an ad that he he put? He's out? doing this. Is now. he the only guy on ears? He's not on ears. He's on over. He's on over ears. Around he's on over ears. Headphones. I think that's like kind of Lincoln super Park on style. brand. Good for him. You know. Yeah. In the dark is that number eight? No way. That's too late for the ranker crowd. In the dark's fifteen. Yeah. I think that like you got to have other ones I like was, Wake I of the Wake of the Floods in there. Mars Hotel Six, Mars Reckoning yeah. Seven, oh, Reckoning because a live I was record. Going Dead Set on is on there. Gray. Wake of the Flood Eight, yeah. Nines Blues for Allah, yeah. Ten Grateful Dead. I feel I feel like I tried to tap into which the is Ranker Skull and crowd, Roses that and that I thought the Ranker crowd would be really into Touch of Grey, e, but as a song, right, you know, but, but not, but the, not al- the record. The album's bad. Yeah, the album's kind of bad. Well, um, you want to know what they think about the best Grateful Dead songs? Yeah, okay, let's go there. Okay, let's do it real quick here. Number one I got for you. What do you got? Ripple. On the Ranker website? Yeah, Ripple. Or or like Uncle John's Band or something. Mm. It's taking a little bit of time to load. Obviously, they're on to us. I thought you were just... uh, I don't think so. Ripple's two. Ripple's two. What's one? Touch of Grey. Whoa! So you did, you did, you know, now you're getting there. Tapped okay. in. Know your ranker. Yeah. You get the small strat, he gets the big strat. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. I think we can, you know what, I'm just going to say we can finish there because I want to get another beer. Sounds yeah. good. Um, I had a really nice well, time. Stay safe and thanks for letting me talk to you honestly about uh, days. That was really nice. You got it. And also, 
we said this at the top, but really lovely to be in physical space Dude, with you guys. So it's nice to see you, man. We'll hope this to is... get you on another one while you're up here. That sounds good. Well, we got to go on a hike too. Yep, that's have, more does important. This thing, make sure the batteries are charged up. <laughs> this for is that hike, stamina I mean. mode for the hike. Thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll have stamina up at the mode. Top of Elfin Lakes. Mm. Yeah, if you want to fly a drone up there and see how that, that would be incredible happens. to do one up there. Okay, peace. Peace out.